wanted to share a little flip through of some journals that I've just finished. So these are the really big journals that I've shared little glimpses of in my studio vlogs and on my Instagram page. So these particular journals have taken me a while to get finished. They are all pretty big journals. They are just over 8 inches wide and just over 11 inches tall and the spines measure 3 inches. They also have heaps of pages inside but I also made sure they would have room to grow so you can add lots of photos and your own ephemera. Here's a look at the first journal. I've embossed this gold pattern onto the front cover so these are all individual stamps that I just placed across the cover and embossed. I've done this before and I love how it turned out. It takes up quite a bit of time and it uses a lot of embossing powder but it has just such a beautiful effect and this really sweet image on the front cover. For the spines on these journals I did something different. They all have this binding. I just did kind of an altered version of the long stitch that I usually do or the three hole pamphlet stitch that I usually do because I wanted to have a focal point here on the spine. So the spines all have some decals and they all have the same decal in the middle with the stitching kind of framing around it. So there's some flowers up the top and the flowers down the bottom. And then this journal has pink thread to match the binding and lots of pink, purple, white, silver and gold beads, which I think turned out super pretty and dainty. The back is just plain green. And then the closure here, it just has some eyelets on the front and back cover. And then I've used this hand crinkled seam binding from my scrap cabin shop, which I'll link down below. She has some really beautiful, elegant color choices. So for this journal, I picked this like deep kind of burgundy red, which I think complements so beautifully with the green and also with the pinks. It just looks really lovely. So I'm just going to show you guys the front covers first and then give you a glimpse inside. So that's the first journal. The next journal is this dark green. And again, it's got all the same sorts of features, so the same binding, the same image here as a focal point. And then this journal has these pretty little flowers on the top and the bottom of the spine. And then it has this light green, yellowish kind of colored thread with a pretty little selection of beads. So lots of blues, purples, and some white colors in there. There's a little shovel charm on this one. Again, for the front cover, I did my own pattern with embossing powders so just individual stamps across the cover where I thought it looked nice and just to kind of frame this cute little image of the little girl praying just a really sweet focal image and then again the hand crinkled seam binding this time I picked kind of like a mustardy brown color which again I think just complements the cover really nicely and just feels really elegant so there's just a piece attached at the front a piece attached at the back and you can just tie it off in a bow. Once again, lots of room for growing when you add your own stuff in here and the back is just plain green. Then the last journal in the trio is this sort of light creamy coloured journal, which has two windows. Again, I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So there's the image of the little girl picking the flowers. And then from the same image, I cut these little deers and they just sit uh, beside each other on the cover like this and then I've done this beautiful leaf embossing underneath each image and some beautiful flowers down the side so really pretty again same thing on the spine with the stitching this one has dark green thread and the same little focal floral image in the middle there for this journal I put a little deer along the bottom and a little bird up the top here which is a little bit covered up by the charms but not too much you can still see him peeking through then our charms again this one has lots of blues some greens and a couple of nice little amber colored beads mixed in there as well back once again is plain and then for this journal i picked this color seam binding it's kind of like a rosy pink color which again i think just complements really nicely with this particular cover and just looks and feels really elegant. So these journals are a really similar size to some of the larger personal journals that I like to use. So they're quite huge. I don't often make journals to go in my shop that are this big because they're just a bit heavier to post. And of course they also take a bit longer to make. But I've made the inside pages the same sort of way that I do when I make my personal journals. 
So I've kept them pretty simple for the most part so that the books themselves are very, very usable on the inside and you can actually fill up each page with stuff. I always like to have a mixture of some more plain and simple pages with some really beautiful pages mixed in, so some pattern pages that spark your interest, but I like to leave enough room in the journal that you can actually really use it. Each of these journals also has really beautiful lining paper. So this one has this pink paper on both the front and back cover. It's got little bunnies, birds, little seed packets, flowers, nests, butterflies. It's absolutely beautiful. And then I'll just give you a really quick glimpse at the pages in each of the books. So there's lots of this beautiful ribbed craft paper throughout the book. And then there's also some beautiful craft consortium paper, which is illustrated by Claire Therese Gray. I've included some ledger paper, some really sweet little book images. I've also included a couple of little hankies in each book, so vintage hanky pages. I really like including those in my personal journals. Just really pretty papers mixed in with some more plain papers. And there's a few little bits and bobs paper clipped to the pages. There's also some pockets, nothing too crazy. Again, I kept it pretty simple. And it's more difficult with larger books to select pages for the book because you want your pages to reach to the cover. So I do a mixture of things. I include some really large papers like this ribbed craft paper and some larger children's books and some cardstock and stuff like that. And then for my patterned pages, I fold them off centre so we end up with some shorter pages and some longer pages. And then whoever uses the journal can always extend these pages if they want to or you can keep them short. You can see how I do this in a lot of my own personal journals but it's really easy just to glue some kind of paper to this um, and extend the page. So there's some little goodies tucked in, some wallpaper pockets, just some of my favorite papers and some beautiful old vintage ledger paper, some music paper, uh, some fold out sheets, some ledger paper tucked into pockets, beautiful scrapbook papers, cute little illustrations, just some really fun and simple pages. I think these are the types of journals that I really love to fill up personally and I would happily keep each of these journals and use them myself. I really, really love how they turned out. But yeah, just some really beautiful pages mixed amongst some more simple pages. So I'll just kind of give you a quick flick at each book from here on out because they all have similar stuff. I also stitched some of this pretty fabric on as a pocket in each journal. So it goes over the page and there's also a pocket on the back. I thought that was really nice. Another hanky in there. And then in the back is actually a manila folder, which I added some paper to and created some pockets. So the back signature you can actually use to kind of stash things. So there's a big full-size pocket in here, a big full-size pocket in here, a couple of little pockets here, a big pocket here with again some stuff stashed inside and then a big pocket in the back. So I just thought that would be nice to kind of have a place to keep some little goodies. So as you're journaling you can kind of tuck things inside and then pull them out from there. So that is the first journal. The next journal is the dark green one and again I'm just going to give you a little flick through. They all have the same sorts of pages inside but this one also has beautiful lining paper. So this one's a little bit more busy. Lots of beautiful little birds amongst the flowers and fruits and stuff. So pretty. And then again, we've got lots of that beautiful craft, ribbed craft paper, ledger paper, just gorgeous pattern pages, children's book pages, music pages, all the same stuff. So there's also some wallpaper pockets and some extra ledger paper tucked into those pockets and paper clipped onto the page so you can utilize that in the journaling. Each book has two vintage hanky pages as well bound into the book, which is fun. And again, just little bits and bobs which are included in the book. So they're all very evenly made. They all have the same ephemera tucked inside. They all have pages pulled from the same places, so all the same types of pages and stuff. And yeah, I just absolutely love how these books turned out. I think they are going to be some really fun to fill up with all your special photos and memories. Again, the last signature in this book is also a little pocket thing. So there's a big pocket again here, a big pocket on the back here, 
couple of small pockets here with some things tucked inside pocket here and then a pocket on the back so there is that journal and then the last journal again some really beautiful lining paper so this one again has the birds and the plants in this beautiful pattern in the front and the back of the book and then i'll give you a quick flick through at all the papers so lots of craft consortium scrapbook papers some beautiful children's book pages some wallpaper pockets ribbed craft paper vintage ledger paper some other beautiful scrapbook papers as well vintage hanky pages this is a manila folder some music paper and yeah, just all lots of the same beautiful selections of papers mixed together. I want to give you a nice glimpse at all the pages, but not spend too long flicking through every page. Just some of the most beautiful papers in these books. Seriously stunning. There's the fabric pocket for this book. And just more beautiful illustrations, pockets, ledger paper, hanky pages. And here you can see a good example of a scrapbook page which I folded off center. So that gives you a slim page and then a nice full page. So that's typically how I do it with the scrapbook paper. But it's important that if you do that, that you're also including other pages. Like I've made sure to include a lot of this craft paper because it's really big A3 paper, which then kind of fills out the book so that you don't have too many shorter pages, if that makes sense. So gives you a nice mix and it's how you can kind of get away with including some scrapbook pages just by folding them off center so again same thing we've got a pocket here pocket here little pockets here a pocket here and then a pocket at the back and of course you can also journal in here you could put photos you could add tape stamps and decorate it however you like you could also add of course more patterned papers and you can decorate those a little bit more to your liking but that is the trio of journals I am so happy with how all of these journals turned out. Again, I would be more than happy to claim any one of these as my own. I love how this binding experiment turned out as well. I think it just adds such a nice touch to these spines. It's even more elegant and interesting, just adding those extra details. I also just really love the richness of the colors together the green colors with the gold and then the beautiful rich seam binding colors which just have such a nice contrast with the books i just feel like this particular trio of books turned out so elegant and and i just am really really happy with how they turned out so these three books are going to be available for sale i've got just the tiniest bit of regret saying that because i again i love them so much i'd happily keep them but I made these to sell. I wanted to make journals that I would personally love and use and then make them available for anyone who is interested. So these journals are going to go into my Etsy store. I'll have the information for that sale written in the description box of this video. I will also have a countdown in my stories on Instagram. Each of these books will come in a little handmade drawstring bag to keep them safe on their way to you. And if you have any questions, uh, I feel like I might get some questions about the binding. I actually, I'll show you the template that I created. So I feel like for a lot of you, you can probably figure this out just by looking at the stitch and by looking at the template, but uh, if you can't, if it's highly requested, I can always make a video on that as well. But yes, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today and taking a look at what I've made. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video.